is it. The day you've been waiting for. I know you're nervous. So am I. My first game, too. Now it's time to go out there and put it on the scoreboard. Now it's time to see who has the heart. Now is the time to prove to yourselves and prove to everyone out there that even though you're locked up, you are somebody. You are worthy of something. And you're able to do something special that no one else in the world can do. You ready to go out there and take what's yours? Yeah! What you've worked hard for? Yeah! But one thing that a lot of people don't know that I want to share with you guys is when I was 22 years old, I came to this city for the first time. I was playing in the Canadian Football League, playing my first pro football game. I was playing for the Calgary Stampeders. We were playing the BC Lions. I was so excited. Two days later, I got cut. <laughs> the dream shattered, sent home with seven bucks in my pocket. I was like, wait, no, I got to play in the NFL eventually. Those are my big goals. That's my dream. You realize that that playing in the NFL was the best thing that never happened because it got me here. So my point is, look, you're going to get your ass kicked. We're going to get the shit kicked out of us. You got to get up. You got to have faith that the one thing you wanted to happen oftentimes is the best thing that never happened. So have faith and just keep that in mind and keep plugging away. Just bring it. That's it. Just bring it. I say that in my everyday life in terms of my challenges and, and things like that. Okay, in between sets, as I'm working out, and as I often do in between sets, I slide into your comment section nice and I read your comments just so we can stay connected, and I always know what's on your mind, and I can address it. So somebody just asked me a cool question, said, DJ, you're on top. Where could you possibly go from here? And you always talk about outworking your competition. Who's your competition? It's a great question. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on top, but anytime you reach the top, you always want to make sure that you have the desire to raise the bar and take the brass ring to places it's never been. That's the key with being on top. Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it can't be done. And in terms of competition, great question. Everyone's my competition, but a fundamental key that I've learned over the years is, and I'll share it with you, my number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. I wanted to be something, and it was important to me to be something. It was, it was important to me that I didn't fail. But by the way, and if I did fail, at least uh, th what was also important was the lesson. Uh, and I didn't realize that until I got older, because you know, when you're in it, you're in the grind, you don't really recognize those things uh, when you're younger, but I could recognize them now and the importance of them now. And just in terms of the drive and the determination, um, a, a lot of it was experience too. You get your ass kicked, you get back up, and you put the gloves back on and you swing away. All right, Saturday afternoon, empty gym, the way we like it, we're tripping over here. It's leg day, which means it's gonna be sweaty, painful, and fun. They say that nothing good happens in the 4 a.m. hour. Well, I can guarantee you this, it's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. Train twice, I'll get my cardio in and breakfast, and then I'll go hit the weights. Clanging and banging, we call it.
know, the masters make the hardest things in the world look easiest. And in the moments where you push yourself, when no one else is around, those moments have a tendency to lead to success. Oftentimes when I see kids and they have been labeled, oh, they're punk kids. True. But there's good in them. And we got to see that potential. And I enjoy that today, seeing the potential in kids just like he did. Especially kids who are kind of wayward and have been going through it. I know what it's like. Our most powerful and most important is when we just embrace who we are. It's just believing in yourself and, right. and embracing who you were born to be. Whether it's three o'clock in the morning, by the way, when we were talking in London, mm -hmm. I was getting up at three because I had to be on set by four. So whatever time my call time is, those are directors and our producers, whatever time my call time is. So my call time is at seven, then you back your clock up four hours and then that's when I get up and I train twice. Just wrap that 4 a.m. cardio. There's no substitute for hard work. I get up super early. Uh, generally, I have this thing where I like beating the sun up, not just in terms of before the sun comes okay. up, I have to get up. Um, and uh, how do I do it? I, it's just important to find balance, and I try and do things really that I really enjoy doing. And a lot of times, you know, it's like in life, right? Life brings like drama and you gotta deal with this person and a <laughs> funky relationship here mm -hmm. and all these things. Work 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, get up at three o'clock in the morning. I don't know if there's a golden rule. I can tell you this, that I believe anything is possible, right? I live in the world of possibility. And I also believe that anything we can accomplish anything with our two hands and just putting in the work with our two hands. And also, you hear this often, but it's really, really true. You gotta find something. If you love what you do and find and be passionate about what you do and find something that you can be passionate, like it really helps. You know, it gives you that motivation when you wake up in the morning. Consistently being told that whatever it is that you want to do, you've got to get after it. You, you, you've got to get after it. There's no substitute for hard work. Hard work always pays. You know, those type of mantras over time. And, and those are your examples of, of, you know, what it's like to get beat down, what it's like to get, just in terms of, uh, just in terms of the struggle, what it's like to be evicted out of your apartment, what it's like to have your car repossessed and watch your parents go through that is, um, is, I think is defining as, as a kid. You know, I grew up, there was a period of time where I was making a lot of mistakes, David. I was, um, I was getting arrested multiple times. By the time I was 16, I was arrested maybe seven or eight times fighting theft, doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have been doing. I was really lucky that I had a couple of people who, along with my parents, uh, who saw the potential in me even when I didn't see the potential in me. And it wasn't until I got older, uh, had a little bit of luck, a little bit of success, that I started to understand the, the value and the power of someone giving back. Some people call you the best pure athlete in wrestling today. Let's start off with a bit of your history. When you broke in, you were packaged as a part of a wrestling legacy. Your father is Rocky Johnson, or Sweet Ebony Diamond, as Canadian fans know him. Tony Atlas was a family friend. All kinds of family roots. Were you ever concerned that you wouldn't get your chance to prove yourself on your own terms? Uh, no, no. I was never ever concerned about that because nor was I ever concerned about trying to fill their shoes because it, my dad's, they were just too big. You know, my grandfather as well. But uh, at the same time, I always knew that one time, uh, one day, whenever I got the opportunity, I was just gonna make it happen. Uh, persistence and, and hard work. I knew one day it was gonna happen. When I made up my mind to, to get involved in, in the business that I have a passion for, that I grew up in, um, I knew that there's gonna be, there's gonna be a time where the success, the success will come. And that's through hard work and consistency. It's, it's you know the same old story, things like that. So it's it's surprising to a degree, but uh, I, was, I was well aware that it was going to happen.
4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up. 4.30, 4.45, I'm doing some sort of cardio. Open these garage doors, it's still dark outside. I do this and then I'll have breakfast and then I will go do all my strength and conditioning training at a gym for about an hour. And then I'll go to set. We all average probably about five hours of sleep. It's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad. Focus! If you do anything, you never want to do anything half-assed, especially when it comes to your training. Get in, be intense, execute on it, and then get out. For a lot of guys out there, and I was certainly one of those guys in my 20s, I thought I had all the answers. I didn't know shit, by the way. In my 30s, I'm still trying to find myself, as a lot of guys are out there. Hopefully, when you hit your 40s, you're hitting a nice stride. If I'm gonna do it, I need to do this job right. I need to stay focused on it. I need to give the best effort I possibly can. We live down here in South Florida. It's hurricane season. Focus! Well, when it's time to go to the gym, we gotta get to the gym. And there ain't no stopping us. It's like I'm gonna be the baddest motherfucker walking it. All right, empty gym, the way we like it. It's Sunday, just finished my warm up. This pain ought to be fun. Focus! I work out twice before everyone wakes up. All right, workout number two. I'm out working all my competition. All right, Saturday afternoon, empty gym, the way we like it. It's leg day, which means it's gonna be sweaty, painful, and fun. Focus! I knew I wanted to be something, and it was important to me to be something. It was, it was important to me that I didn't fail. But by the way, and if I did fail, at least at the, what was also important was the lesson. Uh, and I didn't realize that until I got older, because you know, when you're in it, and you're in the grind, you don't really recognize those things uh, when you're younger, but I could recognize them now and the importance of them now. And just in terms of the drive and the determination, um, a, a lot of it was experience too. Get your ass kicked, get back up, and you put the gloves back on and you swing away. Are you surprised by your success at all? I don't want to say I am because then I think that, that means you're doing something for, for uh, a lesser benefit. You know, I think you do anything to, to maximize your potential in whatever mm -hmm. realm you put yourself in. Uh, within entertainment, there's so many doors that you can go through. I mean, you're literally looking at 15 to 20 doors. I saw myself going in a direction where I would be able to make people smile. Mm -hmm. uh, and stand-up comedy is one thing that I knew that would be able to put me in that position. I wanted to entertain. I didn't. When I was eight years old, I thought I was a combination of these guys. I thought I was a combination of Chuck Norris, Richard Pryor, Harrison Ford, and Rocky Balboa, and Harrison Ford from Indiana Jones. So I was like all these guys uh, in my, oh, and Elvis Presley, too, at eight, right? Very <laughs> lofty ambition. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I knew at that time when I was eight, I wanted to be an entertainer, and I loved the idea of that and what it meant. Um, and when I was eight, I saw uh, Indiana Jones for the first time, and I love that character. Like, wow, that guy was so heroic, and he kicked ass. Everybody that's successful lays a blueprint out. You laid the blueprint out. Uh, you know, I can go down a list from comedians to actors to entrepreneurs to self-made moguls. You look at Russell Simmons, you look at Jay-Z, you look at Tyler Perry, you look at Puff. Uh, I mean, you're looking at people that start off with a small vision and that vision manifested in something beyond expectation. So what I did was, from the people around me, my mentors, Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Pryor, I, surra that? I surround myself with a constant reminder of who's great, constantly. I come down these steps every day, I look at Richard, oh, he's great. 
I see Eddie, he was great. I see Chris Rock, he was great. I, it's a constant reminder, what am I trying to achieve? I wanna be great. So yeah. that motivates me. So the thing that separates me is my drive. My drive is other people's success. The goal was to become a better actor, and so for me, in order for me to do that, I had to work in all different genres. So I wanted to explore family movies, comedies, action comedies, family comedies, mixed drama into as well. So that was important to me, was just to get better. Uh, life is too short, and I, I feel like everyone needs to live, love, and laugh, and understand, like, you know, you're constantly evolving. Things are constantly changing, things are constantly putting, in, putting people in a position where they can get better and do better. We're doing a lot better. A lot better. You're going to have bumps in the road. You're going to have things that happen that make you have a hiccup and, and question, are we doing better? But that's life. That's the course of life. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a positive person. I'm a realistic and positive person. So I see where we are. I'm happy with where we are. And I know where we can be five or ten years from now. It can continue to get better and grow. early uh generally i have this thing where i like beating the sun up not just in terms of when the sun comes up i have to get up um and uh how do i do it I, it's just important to find balance and i try and do things really that i really enjoy doing and a lot of times you know it's like in life right life brings like drama and you got to deal with this person and the <laughs> funky relationship here mm -hmm. and all these things you try and just kind of balance them out as best i can i got a great team around me by the way who really really helps me well and helps me allows for me to come in and work 12 hours a day 14 hours a day get up at three o'clock in the morning For me, you know what? I, I, I believe hard work pays off. You know, um, when you say it's been a, it's been my year and it's it's my time. You know, uh, Hollywood has a way of making everything seem like an overnight success. Oh my God, where did this guy come from? Oh, this kid, who is he? Look, yeah. he's a massive star. I, 18 years in the business. Yeah. You know, you I put in your 10,000 hours. I put on. it. I put in my time. You know, I got I got dues that that have been paid and paid again and paid one more time after that. I stayed true to my dreams, and by doing that, eventually they came true. I'm not cocky, I'm so confident. I'm confident in who I am. I'm yeah. confident in the person that I am. I just don't believe, I don't believe in change. I don't believe in, in doing things to, to uh, manufacture my body to appeal to what I think people might like. This is, this is it, this is, this is what I was given. This is my playing cards. If we was playing poker, I gotta make this hand work. Yeah. This is it for me. And this is what I'm gonna ride out. So how do you not embrace it? 
you get one life. Yeah. One. You get one life. Yes, I get up at crazy hours, whether it's three o'clock in the morning, by the way, when we were talking in London, mm -hmm. I was getting up at three because I had to be on set by four. I'm sorry, by seven. So whatever time my call time is, and I tell this to studios and directors and our producers, whatever time my call time. So my call time is at seven, then you back your clock up four hours, and then that's when I get up and I train twice. I'll get my cardio in and breakfast, and then I'll go hit the weights. Clanging and banging, we call it. Jack and Iron. Well, I come from a happy place. Even yeah. though my place was dark, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy simply because I, I, I have no reason to be angry. Uh, life is too short to be angry. So the things that I do feel a certain type of way about it that I may get upset about, I let it out. I get it out on stage and I allow other people to judge it and laugh at it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you're laughing is because I'm being honest. I can't, I can't express how happy of a person I am. Yeah. I can't express how inspiring and, and uh, I guess you would say, motivating my life and the people around me are. I don't care how bad, how severe it is, after it's happened, I guarantee you'll laugh.